Mark here for Mark 2.0. That's Brian, my co-host, and we welcome Star Wars fans. Unite, Woo! we welcome Chris Bartlett, the droid guy. Oh, gosh. For the Disney Plus series. This is just such an honor, Chris. Thanks so much. Oh, it's my pleasure to be with you guys. Thank you. I want to start out by asking you, what was your first experience with Star Wars, and how did that lead to you be playing all these different droids? Wow, my first experience was as a seven-year-old in the theaters uh, in 1977 watching uh, Star Wars, as it was called then, just Star Wars. There was no other films or TV or anything. So uh, that experience for me just really uh, ignited my imagination as a seven-year-old, you know? <clears throat> um, I loved magic, and uh, it, it all seemed like, like magic to me. Um, and then... That was it. There's no other Star Wars, you know. I uh, but we had the toys and and we had uh, well toys and so then we, um, you know, I, I I'd uh, get my own figures and I'd go create my own stories in the, you know, by the fireplace um, on the and the shag carpet in my living room. So, <clears throat> you know, everybody had like Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker, but I, you know, then you also had like. The RA7 droid or the uh, gonk droid, the power droid, or snaggletooth or whatever. And you're making your own stories with these characters because you've just seen this incredible story, incredible characters and 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 myth and everything. And uh, you want it to continue. And so that's, that's what I did as a little kid is just kept uh, making my own stories, uh, building my own cardboard spaceship that I could sit in and pretend I was flying the Millennium and Falcon and, and everything. So um, that was, you know, all the way through Return of the Jedi, I felt like I was the perfect age um, to experience those things. And then, uh, and then after Return of the Jedi, there was a special on television called, um, I think it was uh, The Making of Star Wars or From Star Wars to Jedi, I think. And I was about 13 and I'm seeing people uh make you know these spaceships and uh from miniatures you know or speeder bikes flying through uh the forest of endor and sometimes it's an act you know it's an action figure on a model or sometimes it's the real actors on a blue screen and and then some guy is running through the forest with a camera and then they speed it up like all of that to me was uh i, I was never ruined for magic by learning the trick you know what i mean I was always, uh, it always made it more special for me. And so learning, being able to see that somebody behind the scenes, somebody makes this stuff for a living and they get to make audiences feel this really special feeling was, uh, was, was something I was really interested in. So I decided then I'm, I'm going to work for George Lucas one day and I, I will think about it every single day until you know, until it happens. Now, <clears throat> as a kid, you, you you imagine these things, but you don't really think that it's going to happen. You just, you know, I'm, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to figure it out. And uh, and lo and behold, it did eventually happen. Um, and uh, that, that came from, uh, you know, as, as an adult, I was building my own costumes. And, uh, you know, I started with the 501st and assembled my, my, my first, uh, you know, Stormtrooper kit. And then I built a Tusken Raider and I built Boba Fett and then I built costumes for my kids. And, and these, are, these are costumes that I really wanted to make as realistic and screen accurate as possible. Um, and, and then I, you know, would, you know, play these characters in, at local events or Comic-Cons or whatever. Um, and so then I, I, I built another costume and was brought in by Lucasfilm to come do an audition. And nice. that, several years later, led to being brought in for a screen test for Q90, Bounty Hunter Droid, and Hyperspace Pilot. So that, that was the, <laughs> the short wow. version. Yeah, you know, I, I read about uh, a, little, a little bit about that. And, and so, so you made a Stormtrooper and then a Tusken Raider, am I right? Yes, and right. then you made that, and then you attempted to see three PO because you yeah. got some used parts. How did that? How did you get those? Yeah, just over the years, I collected parts of, from obscure collectors where they might have like a leg, or maybe they had a 
you know, a chest piece or something. Some other guy had like a foot and, you know, so <laughs> this took like, you know, a, a, a few years, but then, then you have to make them wearable, you know? And so mm -hmm. I spent three years um, working with a buddy of mine to, um, you know, I'd created 3D. The models. guy with the fiberglass shop. Yes. Okay. So this is before 3D printing or anything like that. So um, I'm creating 3D models of what and with measurements and everything of what these parts are supposed to look like, like the uh, where the knees, you know, here we go, where the knees, you know, meet and what that what how that functions on a real yes. on the real costume, you know, things like that and how the how the arms work and how the pistons move and things like that. So um, I, uh, I I spent three years doing that and finally made one that was wearable, but I didn't know if it would fit because we were doing it so far apart and uh but i would give him all the measurements and all the source parts and and uh and sort of um work with him to get it exactly to where we wanted to be and then and then i uh put it on for the first time and it was pretty tight but um it did fit and uh so one time lucasfilm found out about it and they invited me to come in and, and uh, audition so i did well, that, that is totally amazing. I mean, how do they find out about such a thing? I mean, now I know that you started going to conventions and stuff like that. Is yeah. that how you got attention? Well, I lived in Northern California. You know, Lucasfilm is in Northern California. Mm -hmm. And the 501st has, you know, they, they are called in occasionally by Lucasfilm to do events. You know, uh, there was a, uh, for Revenge of the Sith, there was a media uh, event and they needed stormtroopers in the parking lot to, you know, intimidate, you know, people arriving and things like that. So, you know, when you when you do something like that, they were very nice. And afterwards, after, you know, we did that part, they said, once you guys sit down, you can come on in and come into the party. So we did that. And then you just you just uh, meet people and conversation and, and things like that turns into friendships. And um and uh, so I, I, uh, you know, met a couple people there and, and um, we just became friends. And then over the years, as we were talking about things that we're working on or whatever, uh, what we're doing for fun, they found out that I was building uh, a C-3PO and, and then they saw it online and said, you gotta you be crazy to even try such a thing is what they <laughs> yeah. said secretly. Yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah. geez. Uh, who's this Don Baez? Was he like one of the creators in the prequels? Uh, Don Bees is Bees, pronounced. Sorry, thank you. That's a, no. Don Bees is a, a dear, dear friend and such a good guy. He was the droid. He was responsible for the droids for the prequels, mm -hmm. and uh, and you know he worked with Ant Anthony Daniels and and uh, and Kenny Baker and and the the R two you know the astromechs and and um, so he and that was, was an interesting time. I don't mean to interrupt but you know yeah. that was a time where star wars was changing drastically and physical objects were disappearing at an extraordinary rate <laughs> and so now you have to bridge the gap somewhere and i'm sure that your expertise came very very handy at this point right chris uh well i didn't work on the prequels oh, uh, i just want to make sure that's clear um this was this was before i built my my costume so uh but don he um, was very generous with helping me understand how the, when I was building mine, um, understanding like how the leg suspension worked and how the pistons slid in and out and, and uh, how parts fit together. He's, he's just very generous, a very kind man. And, uh, mm. and so <clears throat> that just helped me build my own. And again, at the time I was building it, I was just building it for myself because I just really wanted to see if I could pull off a C-3PO. Um, and, and that was that was uh, he was just really helpful and instrumental in that. So then, basically, your dream came true at this point. You were literally working on Star Wars and working on costumes. And what is the first thing you really did in a, in an official capacity? Uh, the first thing was in Australia. They uh, had a, a media event, and they wanted um, uh, C three PO to give the presentation. Because it was kind of a dry presentation, frankly. It was for Star Wars Galaxies, which is a, a, um, a massively uh, um, multiplayer game. Mm. And um, 
and the presentation was yeah it was it was about uh the skill tree or something like that and um but they had a pre-recorded uh, soundtrack by tom kane voice actor who also does um yoda and the announcer of uh you know the clone wars you know and oh uh, yeah i love his voice yeah so he also did a kind of a rich sounding c-3po and uh and so he had done the voice track and then i did all the animation so that was that was that and then that turned into um other other um very special appearances on television and at the oscars and at the white house and um <clears throat> wow pbs cbs abc fox turned into Letterman, a lot. yeah everyone loves the gold suit bro he just looks so <laughs> good man he's he's an iconic character and i'm 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 so grateful to uh to be friends with him <laughs> <laughs> That's a cool way of looking at it. It sure is. is. Now, you mentioned video games, and you have a background in video games. So how did video games for you influence this this thing that happened to you? Uh, well, it, it was like a parallel timeline. Uh, I, I, I'm a graphic artist, and I started um, as a graphic artist out of college and then uh, came into um, interactive design. So, you know, like websites and interactive experiences and then um i went to uh somebody suggested i apply at a game studio because they all drive lamborghinis and i'm like well, yeah i haven't been a lamborghini guy since i was 12 but um you know i still I've always wanted to work in video games so um i i became the uh the user experience guy on um and designing all the interfaces and heads-up displays and targets targeting reticles of spaceships, weapons, vehicles, uh, all of that. And then also, you know, everything that the game uh, communicates to the player in some way was was my job. And I um, I called Epic Games and I said, hey, uh, I, just meet, I just mailed you my uh, portfolio. I wonder if I could talk to somebody about it. And they said, oh, we have like 400 people we're going through. So um, we'll call you when we get to you. Well... I really wanted the job, so I figured these guys are probably nerds like me, so they probably like Star Wars. So I, I had a, a sand trooper that I had custom built, sand trooper like the like on Mos Eisley, and um, uh, I put that on big backpack, all dirty and a, ma a massive rifle, and uh, and marched down to the offices of Epic Games and. Uh, marched in and i rode the elevator nobody stopped me there was no security <laughs> or anything i rode the elevator up to the top floor oh, i love it and um and the, the the doors open and there's the lead animator for epic games and he's standing there and we're both like like a you freaking know, movie you come in <laughs> yeah and i said uh, oh I my said, god smart uh let me speak to your superior <laughs> No. And, and I just stayed in character the whole time and and I never took off my helmet I talked in the voice and everything and I was just there basically I'm delivering a, a message for um for uh graphic artist Chris Bartlett who wants to speak to your superior kind of thing anyway everybody was they were going to a company meeting so everybody had just came come out of all their offices at the moment that I arrived at, uh, in the elevator and the doors opened and uh, it was a perfect, uh, I don't know what you would call uh, it. A serendipity. You made a yeah. big scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And so I, I did meet uh, the head of the company and the, and the art director, who's a big Star Wars fan. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, that helped them remember me. And they went and looked at my portfolio and then gave me a call that afternoon and said hey that was spectacular <laughs> you know every you know the people that i had told i was wow. going to do this were like i don't think that's a good idea you know <laughs> right but anyway, well, you're so the I smart just, droid aren't you you are you right? really are and, I, <laughs> and then i worked on all the first uh, the first four gears of war games um and the uh, uh Fortnite and uh, a few other games and then that turned into uh the tomb raider games and now i'm working on star wars a star wars video game which is again just a parallel you know timeline for me sure. that working on star wars and then working on star wars are, they're not related other than no. i just i just love star wars so you know 
that was it that is beautiful well yeah. you kind of made them related when you went over there and just made that scene you know and and sure. they're like that's our star wars guy for from now on basically <laughs> right, <laughs> Chris, right. definitely yes. wow and you're such an authority on it too you know you you know, you basically oh. devoted your life to it. I mean, for goodness uh, sakes, no, right. <laughs> you know, and well, I remember, um, I remember being a kid, you know, and I was building my Luke Skywalker out of just duct tape and right. paint and just sure. uh, tubes and, and yeah, cardboard yeah. and whatever. And we're making Flashlight. guns and stuff, right. you know, and gosh, yeah. I have pictures of that. You know, when I read your stuff, I remembered all those pictures of my self on halloween you know this right. or that character gosh yeah and... I, I was probably like you i was blessed with uh parents who were very creative and and uh wanted to help me in my desire to you know as a as a seven or eight year old you know become luke skywalker so they made my first yeah. uh my first star wars costume but before the year before that i was a robot my dad built this giant silver oh, nice. robot that i i was so inside it i just felt like I, i'm i i love this feeling of being in a, a character in a costume and so i've got this really great um uh how it started and how it's going image where the i'm in the silver robot costume my dad built for me when i was six or seven and then i have the thumbnail image of Mandalorian season two finale, oh. um, the chrome silver RA7 droid, which is that was really special. Wow, that is awesome. Yeah. Now, the RA7 droid that just originally showed up in the first Star Wars, right? It's when yes. the Star Wars grabbed the droids and they woke up in that strange place, and uh, right in the sand crawler, right? And he's he's there speaking some kind of odd language, and oh. and that was that was the first time we saw the RA7 droid, right? And then, um, and then they you know, originally in that bartender scene, so I played him in the bartender uh scene in right. in uh, mandalorian season one um originally john favreau had asked for a black c-3po or black protocol droid for the bartender and i was like yeah i could make that um but i did just finish this death star droid this ra7 and you know we haven't seen that since forever um and uh you know since the uh since the new hope and they said oh yeah okay well let's see that so I finished, uh, I got that chromed and, and dirtied it up and everything. And then that became the, uh, oh. that became the um, bartender. And then John liked it so much, he brought it back in season two. And in that one, I'm also playing and uh, taking inventory of Moff Gideon's ship, you know, as Mando is hiding in the shadows there. Um, you know, it's a cool featured shot, uh, establishing shot that this is an Imperial uh, ship. And that's, you know, there's all kinds of characters in Star Wars. Sometimes there's some that are in the background that are filling out the crowd, and then there's some that are featured. You know, that that are helping to establish the location and the story. And then there's ones that are main characters. You know, that uh, that really um, you know help the hero uh, help shine the light on the hero. I guess you could say. Well said. Well said. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry, Mark. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, what was it like to work on The Mandalorian? What was the set like and uh, the atmosphere? It seems like everyone's family over there. Yeah, you know, uh, first of all, I work with John and Dave each time I, I go over there. And uh, and they're just like your next door neighbor. They, they just want to talk about Star Wars and they're very, have great big ideas. You know, um, uh, John the way that he is, is, is when he's there in the morning, he usually um, is there to, to direct the, the overall what's happening today, you know? So like he might say something like, um, all right, what we're doing today is it's like when you teach, you know, when you, you teach your kid how to ride a bike, you uh, are excited that they're learning this new skill. They're excited, but also a little scared, but then, you're a little scared because now they have this new freedom and then they could wipe out and, and skin their knee or whatever. But that whole thing is, that's what we're shooting today. And we're like, oh, okay, I get it. Like, mm -hmm. I understand what the main character is supposed to be feeling. I understand what the kid is supposed to be feeling, all that. So he makes it really relatable uh, because Star Wars is, is very relatable, even though it was it set it a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. It couldn't be more unrelatable, but... Somehow, George Lucas and and now John Favreau and Dave Filoni 
um, you know, keep it very relatable. Um, in answer to your question about what it's like on set, you know, sometimes we're outside, sometimes we're on a, in a set, um, you know, whether it's in the hallway of a ship or it's in the, uh, in a hangar, um, you know, on Tatooine, or it might be on the volume, which is the, the digital, um, rooms that have, you know, wraparound screens and over and a ceiling, uh, where we can project the um, the other kinds of environments that will make it feel much bigger, like we're on a, a big, large outdoor set. And uh, what's cool about that is all of the light and everything from the environment that you are in, because there's no blue screens, um, all that light and color bounces off of the characters and they really feel and look like they're actually in that environment. So it's really hard to tell which scenes are you know on the volume and which are not because like i said we shoot some that are outside and then some without the volume and some is a combination of a set and the volume and some you know so the the uh, the whole team does an amazing job of set, decorating the set so that you can't see the scene you know you can't see where the end of reality yeah is and where the where the the illusion continues mm -hmm. so they they do an incredible job and i i love watching them work and seeing them you I know what they so i might be standing next to this this big jet engine you know and then barrels and crates and stuff and then just beyond that there would be the screen but when you're looking at it you know you're seeing a guy way in the distance and he's welding on the on the deflector shield of some ship way in the background or whatever but you know he's really he's really a digital character that you know when you're looking at it from this distance that you can't even tell it looks so real so it's really cool for actors to be able to uh i mean you don't even have to pretend i mean you're all you have to worry about is making your character you know do and and uh, appear as real as as possible and everything else is you know, just makes it so easy to do a good job at that. Well, it was brilliantly said what you said, the the mind and the eye, you know, you mm -hmm. see green screen, but then with the LED wall, those little hints of color are reflecting off of you just right. And there's no replacing that. In right. fact, the Mandalorian has this way of bringing things to reality. Mm -hmm better than anyone has ever done before not only <laughs> not only i mean i gotta hand it to the guy that said let's just make a 20-foot led wall and probably everyone was like what what are you well, talking about I will, bro i will tell you when i worked at epic games uh right before i left they were saying this is in 2012 they said one day um the unreal engine is going to be in movies and i was like Oh, yeah, right. Like uh, on big screens and everything. And, you know, that's how they were going to do it. And um, and then uh, my first day of filming The Ferryman, uh, the, the goggled um, Kubaz, you know, with the mm -hmm. snout. <laughs> yeah. um, he I, I was filming that and I saw these these uh, these massive screens for the first time. And I run into my friend Jeff and I'm like, Jeff, what are you doing here? And he was like, this is all us. And I'm like, what do you mean? He was like, this is all the Unreal Engine. This is all Epic um, and ILM working together. And so the Unreal Engine is is on in films and movies now. And I'm you like, I can't believe You literally that. knew the guy. It's like, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, so no, no coincidences in, in life, I believe. And, and then everything moved toward the Zero character, which I just really enjoyed. Oh, so did I. I when was... I first saw that character, I was like, that is a oh, really nice. cool droid. Oh, right. yeah. Oh, nice. Right. This okay. guy was the first, he was the first one that I came in for a screen test. And what they did was, um, they uh, they said, I want you to come in for this. We, we, we know about your work, um, your previous work. Um, and uh, we'd like you to come and do a screen test. And a screen test, if you don't know, is where you go and put on the costume. And then, you, and then you do some kind of, they give you a hint. Like they said, all right, we want you to pretend like you're looking for something. Okay? Like you're searching for something and, and you hear a noise and, and you know, you're... Because the voice was actually done uh, separately. The dialogue. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The voice was by Richard Iowati, a British mm -hmm. comedian who did a mm -hmm. great job. Oh, and, great. Uh, and I was in the suit. So... Um, you know, if you look at him, 
So knowing that, I was watching the episode and I see you and you're literally, it must have been great to sit in the Razor Crest and sit there and mess with all that stuff. You have no idea. I mean, I, I was, like I said, I was preparing for that moment my whole life. I mean, all season, I knew that day was coming. And so I was so excited the night before I couldn't sleep. And I, and and so um, that day when John said, hey, why don't you go get familiar with the uh, cockpit? Um. I was like, yes, please. So I went over there. It was all low lights and dark while they're filming something else on another set. And I'm just all by myself. And I sit in the Razor Crest. And I just feel my life of fandom flashes before my eyes in slow motion, you know, and I'm here. And then I uh, accidentally dozed off. I was going to say, <laughs> you're <laughs> tired. I was tired. Um, but anyway, John, John uh, Favreau and Deborah Chow, director, uh, came in and and you know, I was like, "What? I'm here. I'm I'm awake. What? What are you talking? Hi, hi. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm here. Go. And uh, uh, anyway, so then I spent all day flipping all the switches and you know doing the sticks and everything. And and Deborah Chow goes, um, or John said, actually, Chris, you're since you're a droid, uh, you're just gonna jack into the to the ship, and then that's how you fly it. And I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> but I still I still wanted to do all the buttons, so I'm flipping them because they all worked. Like the lights worked, the, the switches all worked, and you turn them on and off. And I, I I just kept doing it in between. So they're like, just that's fine, just keep doing it. And so it makes it in. Otherwise, I was been sort of just sitting there, kind of boring, you know, just driving the ship with my little scump jack, you know. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, so if you go back and watch the scene, um, I treated him very much like a praying mantis, like a bug, uh, because he, he, you know, he looks like that, right? Look at his, his face. Oh, yeah. So, so the, in my movements and everything, I went and researched uh, praying mantis and watching, watching them, you know, chew things and, 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 uh, and kill things. And also how they move is very spooky. And that's how I wanted to make zero. So, so that's, uh, that's how I how I treated him. Um, how did it work was, when Z was on the flight deck with everybody? Cause I know <laughs> the lower half of you was CGI. Was it not? Right. So on set, it was, you know, as an actor, you have to be okay making a with the green stuff. pants or whatever. Yeah. yeah they're, yeah. they're gray, gray <laughs> pants with dots on them. But, um, but yeah, no, you'll, you'll notice when I'm walking down the ramp, uh, in when zero is being uh, introduced, I'm walking down the ramp and I'm looking at them while I'm walking down the ramp, which is not something human beings do. Human beings watch where they're walking, right? Mm -hmm. And the first time I did it, I was watching where I was going, and then I turned to look at them, and I was just like, you know, as a droid, wouldn't he know where he's going? Wouldn't he have sensors or something that he knows where he's walking without having to look? So I took a risk. And I was like, I looked at them while I was walking down the ramp, and I was like, don't fall, don't fall, don't yeah, fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I get down to the end, and I'm still looking at them, and I'm still tracking them. So that was, uh, that was, I was very nervous. But, um, but yeah, you're right. They replaced my legs with CG legs. Um, and, uh, and that was fine, because it was the most comfortable droid costume I'd ever worn. Because, hey, I can sit down, right? Um, and, uh, and it was very, yeah, I loved, loved playing Zero. He's, he's, uh, he's, he's so cool looking too. I mean, mm -hmm. like he's got these cool oh, ammo, sure. ammo, you know, bandoliers and he's got a weapon that looks very much like Boba Fett's blaster. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I was just, I couldn't have been happier to, to play this, this very cool looking character. Yeah. Uh, I was almost bummed when they had it off him because I wanted I them to turn him, turn him to the good side, like the <laughs> nanny droid or something. Uh, <laughs> yeah. right. well, the thing about droids is they are as pervasive or uh, ubiquitous in the Star Wars galaxy as uh, household appliances. You know, everybody has a refrigerator. Yours might look slightly different than mine, but they're pretty much similar looking, you know, same thing with protocol droids. They are, um, they uh, all look pretty similar, but they do have some differences. And there's tons of them, you know, like it, just because you see one doesn't mean that's the only one that exists in the in the universe. So so, uh, you know, who knows? Who knows what could happen with mm -hmm. other, you know, droids? I, I read that you in your designing, you kind of could swap out a couple of things and get a nice new look to a droid just by mixing and matching yeah. a bit, maybe. Yeah, I mean, Disneyland used to have this thing called a droid factory where you could go come out of Star uh, Star Tours 
and you could um, build your own little yeah. droid action figure. So you can swap mm -hmm. out arms and whatever. And I mean, that's what we do on set also. So there was the, the, uh, the, um, uh, the droid, the traffic droid from the book of Boba Fett with, uh, oh, that almost yeah. gets run over in that, in that high speed scooter yeah. chase. <laughs> um, and, uh, and that was originally just supposed to be a silver C-3PO. <laughs> But uh, because of the reflection on the sand and everything, he looked kind of gold. So, uh, so I just uh, uh, worked with them. Uh, wh why don't we just swap out like the chest, and we can weather him up, and we can put graphics on his nice. on his face and his arms, and and um, and so that was clever, actually. You know, I, I heard you looked at a cone or something. You saw a similar design, and you adapted that to the robot or something. Is that true? well? Wh well, what what it was is they said he's going to be in traffic. And so I was like, okay, so in traffic, maybe you maybe... didn't want people to say, oh, that's C three PO, right? Exactly. Yeah. But you know, and you know, in traffic, I was, tra I was thinking of like warning, you know, warning arrows pointing to go, you know, whatever. That's so smart. that's kind of that's kind of what I was thinking. I gave him four different options of what you know, what graphics we could put on him, and they picked one. Robert Rodriguez picked one, and so I painted that overnight and and got it to set. Um, actually, um, that, were, that looked really cool. The markings on his face. I didn't really notice the markings that were on his arms. I read about. Yeah, them, no, but... he was he was only in there a little, a yeah. short amount of time. But this is the actual. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That turned this out really nice. Cool head that I wore uh, on the show. <laughs> oh, and is that mostly after... like a light metal? Is it plastic? They they look heavy. They look so real it's, and heavy. You know, uh, droids are are metal, um, mm -hmm. but this one is fiberglass. So. <laughs> Anyway, um, I figured yeah. it was a plastic to make, you know, because they're just so good at stuff like that. They can make anything shiny, reflective now. But... Well, yeah, the chrome, there's a chrome finish underneath all this dirt, you know, so. Oh, um, gosh, that looks so, so that's cool. Yeah, thanks. That whole room yeah, is just amazing back there. I know. Thank you. Just really thanks. marveling at that. Wow. <laughs> well, one costume I remember reading didn't go quite so well. It was pinching you. And you took a bad fall after hitting a stormtrooper. Let us hear that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, that was the bartender, right? mm -hmm. uh, the RA seven. Uh, uh, yeah, I did. Uh, we 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 went through that scene about seven times rehearsing it. Um, where where the uh, where um, uh, Werner Herzog's character gets killed, the the client as we call them, um, by Moff Gideon's death troopers. And uh, in that scene, there's all this chaos going on with with gunfire and and everything uh and my job is to take the drinks to <laughs> to uh carl weathers character and make it through all of the gunfire and, and everything eventually that i do get shot but but when we went to film it um i bumped into one of the stormtroopers and fell on the hard ground instead oh. of on the stunt pad oh. that I was to... but you know what that wasn't my first fall the the uh, i mean that wasn't my last fall in fact they uh you know in obi-wan kenobi i played one jack um uh one jack well this is yeah. four long but, but he looks just like him and uh and and in that scene you know i do all my own stunts in these suits um and uh in that scene i had to f get shot in the alley you know when you see it happen it's just one time and then it goes away and then you're done but we spend all morning you and mcgregor and i in that alley and and also kumail nanjiani uh uh shooting me i slam up against the wall fall down and crash on the ground and we did it like 12 times with no <laughs> oh <pack>. my god <laughs> yeah oh, and so you know when you talk about pinching um oh. you know that was but listen i don't i'm not complaining i'm in star wars uh so oh, yeah. I, i'm just happy to be <laughs> to be alive but uh, it is. It did turn out to be a really cool character, so much so that they made a made. So now I have two, Mark. I have two um, uh, action figures. I can't believe it. And um, you know, that's that's really you know the the dream is to be in Star Wars. You never imagined that they would actually make a, a one, let alone two, you know, figures of your characters. That's just sure. you're already at the pinnacle of amazing, mm -hmm. you know, fandom at that. Point. And then when they make a character, I mean, a figure, it's just at my whole childhood, again, like came back around to, to, you know, Star Wars and action figures and playing and telling stories. That is so beautiful how that, yeah. that came around. I mean, like you said, to have an action figure made, much less two, 
I mean, you're there. You right. Pretty much, You've made it. I mean, and 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 really, you proved yourself. I mean, do 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 you basically work for Disney now? Did did you no. have to kind of who do you work for? Well, I have a talent agency that that oh, represents yes. me, and and mm -hmm. so whenever they uh, or whenever um, we film a new show, they call call me, um, and and then I I'm employed for that day, you know, or those that week or that season, sure. or whatever. Um, and so it's it's you don't as an actor you don't necessarily work for uh, Disney uh except for when you're on set you know then you're mm. then you're working for them mm. you know i should have i should have realized that because we know brendan pretty good and you know he yeah. even through season two even was on an episode by episode basis really and right. so you know i it, you know and and then and then uh um leilani she also worked with uh mcgregor and uh i hear that he was really a big fan did you guys like talk a lot of star wars when you're working together is he like that uh no he and i talk old cars because oh, uh, wow, we, wow. we both nice. uh, drive restore and drive old old vehicles so and and also we both ride old motorcycles so um so we really hit it off uh when we were talking uh he drives you know old volkswagen uh uh buses and and uh trucks and then i i um, really I also, not volkswagen but um uh, i have a 62 ford econoline window bus that i restored and then uh, also 58 plymouth which is um oh gosh. Uh, the the christine car you know if you remember stephen king's film very uh, well you know. and uh and then i, I saw that in theaters i'm that old wow <laughs> great yeah yeah so, My dad took me uh, to see that. <laughs> so it was so cool to talk with him him about that stuff uh you know and to be able to connect with him something on uh, something other than the high ground you know yeah. because everybody says that to him <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure everybody of says wow i didn't know that about mcgregor he likes old vehicles and stuff that's really cool yeah. that's really yeah. cool Thanks. yeah uh but otherwise when i would fall on the, as one jack fall on the ground crash and i'm on the ground and i'm you know, my helmet's off or it's choking me or whatever. <laughs> he, you know, they take it off and he's standing over me and he goes, Chris, are you all right? And I said, uh, oh, yeah, I'm okay now. <laughs> it was so cool. I'm going to oh. time. I'm going to lay yeah. here for a second. <laughs> yeah. He was just so oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so nice and so patient. So anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brendan said that he, he mostly runs into the, the 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 crew. We know John, you know, is just a huge Star Wars. No, I saw him get all teary eyed when he saw R two D two. You know, so he's definitely one of us. Is is that mostly most of the people who are working there? Do they look for fans to to be a part of that? Do you figure? Well, you know, Bill Burr wasn't a Star Wars fan. I don't know oh, if you ever. Right. That's right. I was going to ask you about him. Yeah. yeah. So I, but. But John knows him, and John uh, wanted to bring him on the show. So mm -hmm. it was ironic, you know, that he was kind of bagging on Star Wars before, you know, on late night talk shows and stuff. But then, you know, but then he he you know, brought him on the show. So it, it's really just getting the best people. Um, and and you know, Werner Herzog had never seen Star Wars, so he's just an amazing actor. Oh, um, oh yeah. yeah, and and uh, and and so. Um, you know, it was funny when I was there with with uh, Werner Herzog. Uh, we were both standing watching a scene being shot, and I'm like up to my neck in droid, and he's <laughs> he's comfortable in his suit. Um, and so I'm standing there. We're both kind of eating, and I said, it, "I was just, I was just, you guys, I was so excited, but I was trying to stay cool, right?" So I just, I just leaned over and I was like, "Isn't this exciting?" And he goes, "This is serious work." <laughs> we oh. have life into these characters which would not otherwise exist and i was oh like oh my gosh oh. Yep. that's just what i was thinking <laughs> yeah i was just gonna say that oh. <laughs> anyway. oh my but gosh. but it taught me in like what in you know 10 seconds it taught me like what how special what we were doing i already felt like it was special but it's also serious work you know we're we're trying to tell Sorry. stories and create stories and characters that relate to that that a star wars audience would would feel something with you know and like you know misty who does uh quill i mean how 
how did you know think about how you felt when you saw Quill, who you'd gotten to know and then now he's i was he's crushed killed by, i was by crushed the, right we and you didn't know was he killed by the biker scouts was he killed by ig11 what, what but but he now he's gone but you he got you'd so be, close yes like, oh my right God, that and that's, 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 oh, that is so much um you know, to uh, not only Nick Nolte's voice, but also uh, Misty's physical performance that made you feel really like, if you go back and watch that, that's her eyes you're seeing, you know, in the eyes of Quill, that's her eyes. And and she just did an amazing job. Uh, and that that's the thing is that John just does a really good job of getting the best people. Um, and then he just messed up with me, but um, he, he no, really gets the best people to, uh, to, 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 bring these these stories um you know to new audiences and and uh i love it it's great i think yeah. star wars has become something else now mm -hmm. and uh i can't really call it an improvement because we live in such different times mm -hmm. than we did back then but what i can say as you guys are doing new things in the same old tradition of the old Star Wars, and you're doing it so well, I, I just it just blows my mind. I was watching you tonight, and it was just blowing my mind how great that that zero was. And I was watching, uh -huh. Quill, I was even watching Quill tonight, and I was like, "How the hell did they do that? It's so good!" Right? You know, uh, I mean, there's there's lots of secrets there of how things are done, but to help make it special and feel really real but that's you know that's none of us like spoilers so i'll just i'll just tell you that they work that we work really hard to make, make the illusion feel as real as possible <laughs> and a lot of times there is no illusion it's real like what we're doing is real like misty's performance yeah. or or mine or brendan's or um you know carl weathers or giancarlo or gina carano like everyone is so real um in their characters that you know the the it, it feels like it's an illusion but it it really is um you know just trying to to make you feel what this character is feeling like we did with, you know like like missy did quill and um yeah you know i i play mostly droids but i do play um aliens as well you know like wow. uh and the ferryman but also um the uh, Cascadag from Glavis on the air. He was on the uh, oh, elevator right. with Mando, right? Yeah. You know, and that's, um, that was, that was cool. They built the costume around and built the character around me. And then, um, and then in that moment, um, you know, everybody, I tried to make it as relatable as possible because everybody has, you know, when you get on an elevator and there's people you don't know, and you're just like, can this ride go faster or whatever? You, know, you don't want to talk to anybody. Sure. There's an awkward Oof. silence oh, yeah. and then somebody makes a noise <laughs> or a smell or whatever, you know? And so that's how I tried to play it. And I was working with, um, with Bryce Dallas Howard, who was just a wrapping you up in a blanket of joy. She's so fun and so sweet and so full of happiness. Um, and also John Favreau on that, on that day. And so, I was I was supposed to walk into the elevator. First of all, it's this one shot. We call it a one -er. It's a one shot where the camera follows Mando into the elevator and then is sitting there in the elevator and then follows him out and goes around, you know, and there's no cut. And so we were we were just trying to get my me and Mando's timing right. Um, and so they shot that whole thing like mm -hmm. so many times and we were just trying stuff, you know, like I, I, I don't think at, in the moment I actually realized that we were doing a wonder um, because I'm in the costume, you know, I've got the little black eyes and you can't really see very well. But anyway, so uh, I was trying all kinds of stuff. Like I look at, you know, look at Mando and then I'll just like scoot off screen like this, you know, <laughs> um, you know just like. Yeah, and so it was really fun to have John Favreau and Bryce there to say, "All right, let's go to comedy school. We're gonna do what you're doing, but let's let's tweak the timing just a little bit, and then it'll be funny, but not too funny for Star Wars, you know." So that's I think that's perfectly how it worked out. And it was great working with Brendan again. Oh sure. yeah, he yeah, and he talks about uh, Bryce and uh, you know John and how great they are, just just like how fun it is and how everything yeah. is like on the fly and. 
Yeah. You know, and uh, oh, gosh, I think and that's they, what's making it great. Yeah, they really let you try a bunch of things, you know, and uh, there's no, there's no fear of like, oh, you're taking too long or anything like that. <laughs> and uh, so, but you know, we are we do have some experience, so that we um, we uh, are able to you know try our stuff in an economical way uh, without dragging stuff out, you know. Um, and uh, we're like, okay, let's you know, let's go again, let's do it again, and we're ready to go. And that's the thing. If you, you know, want to be an actor, here's what John Favreau recommends. Uh, be on time, which means be early because you sure. never oh, yeah. on time. You're either early or late. There's no like no one gets there right sure. exactly when, you know. So mm. be be early. Um, come prepared with the stuff that whatever you've been given, even if it's just today's lines, you know, even if it's just this scene's lines. Um, and then come with ideas, you know, like... Uh, I didn't know what the ferryman sounded like, but I read all my, I read all my lines in, that came in English. I read them all like, um, the speeder is brand new. We just arrived on the Spinwood Freighter. <laughs> and John goes, hmm, that's good. Uh, let's cartoon it down a little bit. And, oh. uh, and then we did it. And then, and then Dave, Dave Filoni was like, maybe this will be, a, this should be an alien language. And I was like, I mean, that's what we saw the Kubaz and Mos Eisley, the spy, you know, with the snout. He sounded like an alien and we didn't know what he said and we didn't care. We just knew what he was doing yeah. because of how he acted with the stormtroopers. And so, you know, um, I, I, I do all the lines for all my characters as if they are going to use my voice for them. So I do all the inflection and all the emotion that I would want to put into it. And and sometimes they do end up using my voice, like the uh, the server droid um in uh garza's cantina in the book of boba fett you know uh oh, wait you forgot your camtono you know Boom. Um, <laughs> that was uh, that was my voice and i didn't you know you never know if they're going to use your voice until you watch it on set on tv you record it but you never know what they're going to use and so anyway it was a, it was a fun treat but yeah uh, I go all in 100% uh, when I'm doing these characters because that's what I would want to see as a fan. Uh, you know, that's what I'd want to see on screen. Yeah. And you know, there's nothing cooler than seeing something from 1977 come up on your screen. You're like, oh my God, I'm flashing back all the way. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Yeah. And then you just see it's kind of a C-3PO, but it's got kind of insect eyes. Where have I seen that guy before? You might not even remember it. It's like the ferryman. You had to just remind me where I saw him before. I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. He knocked right. a long time ago. When <laughs> Right. Well, when they when she called me, when the production assistant called me and said, yeah. um, we'd like to bring you in for the fairy man. And I'm like, what show is this? And she goes, oh, it's Star Wars. <laughs> And I go, okay, and, well, what is this character again? She said, it's the fairy man. And I'm like, is this like Lord of the Ewoks? Or what? what is he? <laughs> is he like, this, so this is going to be shirtless. Mm. And I'm going to be playing a flute, right? And she goes, <laughs> yeah, you're going to be playing a flute. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, uh, yeah, it's Star Wars. I don't care what I'm doing. I don't care if I'm in the in the forest with wings and glitter and a little, little beard or whatever. Uh, I don't care. I'm in Star Wars. And then I got there and I saw it was the Kubaz character. And I was like, oh, phew, I'm glad. That would have been my first, uh, <laughs> you know. The flute first is an interesting choice, I got to say. <laughs> it was the ferryman, not the fairy man, the ferryman. Fairy it's the guy man. who in mythology, yeah. you know, leads people across the the river and that's kind of what he was doing so yeah hilarious uh, scene hilarious yeah. scene you find out about mando's uh, droid problem mm -hmm. right and then go on to play all these droids that was a funny you know and what a hilarious character. guy came up in that sputtering piece of garbage and brian Posehn. right oh, he well, was way, great that land speeder was real it was a wow. practical four door big sedan version of a land speeder and it was massive and when that thing swung around because it's on a gimbal so it it's floating okay. when it comes around it was so awesome mm -hmm. I, I just like this day couldn't get any better it's great oh wow yeah. Yeah, the speeder was real. Gosh, yeah, you know, and that's that makes it fun too because I'm watching these things with a whole new perspective, you uh -huh. know, and and it's fun too because you know now we've spoke with you and when I see you trying to meet the challenges of being in that suit and stuff like that, it's just <laughs> sure. so 
so fun to watch the episodes again. So uh, I, I imagine you have a lot of people who follow you and are interested in your work and fans, right? Um, well, I'm on uh, Instagram's mostly where I go, just because okay. that's I, I feel like I have the most engagement with with uh, um, uh, fans of the of the show and sure. of my work and stuff so if you go to chris f bartlett that's my instagram and um i uh yeah that's that's where i am i don't know nice. how what to, i don't know it's it's like twelve thousand followers or something it's not like you know it's not like nine hundred sixty thousand or something but you know it will be after this no i'm kidding close group, <laughs> close group. So, yeah um, but we I know this this Star Wars thing is is taken off, and it's it because of popular. it's going to go because, some Star Wars for sure. Yeah, it's oh going man, somewhere. I tell you <laughs> what, because of people like you and Brenda, exactly. Who I mean, Brenda was sitting; he was sitting here talking to us about. It's like being a kid, but they're throwing pads out for me, you know, and, and, <laughs> yeah. and that's the vibe I'm getting off of you. Oh, you're yeah. back at you're, you're you're in your workshop, you're building costumes, now you're mm -hmm. actually getting paid and appreciated to do it. And it's been a great, great time watching you bring these characters to life. It really great has. job, Chris. Oh, thanks. Thank you so much. Well, I'm so grateful that that you guys are watching the show and that fans are watching the shows, um, because we wouldn't have the show if nobody watched them you know and um and you know we, yeah we have a great time making the shows but it's all because of you guys that we get to keep making them so thank you very much for watching and for talking about it um yeah and then and then in a couple of weeks we'll be um seeing mandalorian season three which oh, i'm really yeah. excited to see. so um, i'm sure you're in there somewhere i know you can't say a lot but no. tell me you're in there somewhere well, you know what? I've been a fan since 1977, and uh, that's when I saw the films for the first time in the movie theater. And then I went and played with action figures. And sorry, what was the question again? There we you're go. In the third season, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're gonna good answer. There. Good answer, Chris. Uh, uh, I know uh, they, they made you sign that big intimidating thing. So uh, <laughs> I hope you come back. Uh, well, I'm just excited to see the kid again, and I'm excited to see Mando. Um, you know, in his his uh, his new um, uh, starfighter re reconditioned hot rod starfighter, and um, yeah, and and then just to see uh, where we're going. I mean, like that trailer, you saw lots of stuff in that trailer, but not sure. nearly. I think what you know, I, I think what what's great about the shows is they don't give away too much in the trailers. You know, you, don't yes. you as a fan kind of yeah. uh, kind of like frustrated when you see too much you feel like in a, in a trailer and i thought this one whatever you know they what they showed in that one i felt like oh this is enough to get me excited i can't wait to see what, sure. what oh, we had brendan there. biting his tongue he said death watch and said nah, i can't tell you and yeah. i just uh huh. I, I'm, yeah i just i cannot wait to see what happens and i i, I know you had a delay there I'm not sure what all that was about. I can't really find out what it was about. I don't care. I'm glad you resolved it. And I hope things go full throttle. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and, and I hope your success just gets bigger and bigger, Chris, because you've earned it, man. You really oh, have. Oh, God. Thank you so much. That's very nice of you guys. Well, I just I love nice. Star Wars. And I love Same people. Here. You know, I like to talk to Star Wars. And isn't it great when you finally see you know you get to meet your hero and they're like i uh, love i love this stuff i do you know i i, I know werner he's a serious character actor yes and what yeah. he did for the show was like perfect even I brenda was like that guy kind of freaked me out yes. like you, you uh, kind of had a yes. similar story he freaked me out in real life but he <laughs> also taught me a lot about yeah. about being an actor and and uh he was he was really great um you know there's when you when you watch these shows you know like i mentioned these scenes go by so quick that um and and sometimes an entire crew you know 30 people w worked on that one moment that just went by and they spent all day on it oh sure and yeah. you think like gosh why is that was that a waste why you know it's not they they were crafting it to get it it's like a it's like sculpting you know a sculpture you work on it yeah you, know, you might work on the ear you know all morning 
but if the if the whole thing looks great but the ear looks crappy then you know it's gonna it's gonna throw it off and so we're just really trying to craft everything um to be just right so that you don't notice any mistakes or 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 any holes in the in the uh I don't know, in the fabric of the, the the thing we're making. So anyway, it takes a lot of people to make something so special that goes by so quick. So I love that you're re-watching them. Uh, and I hope that you'll be able to, you know, pick up on some things you haven't, you haven't seen before. So um, here's one to go back and watch for. In uh, season one, episode three, was actually the first time that I, I wore the zero costume even though zero oh, okay is not is not the character is not in there the costume is in there it, that's the uh it's the the episode called the sin where all the mandalorians come and rescue mando right yeah. there's all these bounty hunters in the street that are all closing in on and, and if you look real close you'll see a really familiar wow there bug we go bug-eyed yeah. character yeah who has a slightly different blaster. It's it's long like this one. He has slightly different ammo belts here, but it's it's still me in that costume. And and um and uh I asked Dave, I said, so was that zero? He just he just had different stuff. Dave Filoni. And he said, uh, I don't think that's zero. I think that's a a different uh, character. So um, okay. you know, like I said, droids can look alike and be totally different characters uh but anyway go back and rewatch that and you'll be able to see um and man i got some really cool shots where where i'm you know this close with a blaster and the thing thing about that is again how just to illustrate how much fun we're having is you know as a kid just like mark you were mentioning um you know you had like pvc pipe you know probably guns as a kid and you're running in the streets and you know i got you you know and then you fall over dead or whatever I did that as a kid. And then uh, when I'm filming that scene, I have a blaster, I have cover, and they're like, and cut. And I'm still like, I'm I'm, pr I'm practicing, I'm aiming like, okay, how am I gonna drop here? I'm gonna pop up, do this. And I go like this and, you know. And so I just Chris, kept cut. going. <laughs> right, I just kept going because I was trying to work mm. it out. Like I wanted the motion and stuff to feel like I, me as a seven-year-old wanted to see a character acting. And so when you go back to watch that, I get a couple of really cool close-ups of the character. And I'm and just when you watch that, just remember you're seven years old. I'm seven <laughs> years old in that moment. And I'm having the I love time it. of my life. It's so it's so it. fun. Oh gosh. So. Oh, I feel so good when I talk to you guys. Yeah. It's so amazing. <laughs> great. It's just That's so great. fun to listen to you guys. Really. Uh, is. Uh, will we have any more questions, Mark? No, this was such a thrill. We're honored, Chris. It's been a great, oh, great, thanks. great night, Chris. Yes. Yeah. So, um, what's what's on the horizon right now? You got anything else working? What do you you got any uh, something uh, you want to mention? Well, I'm I I filmed another show last fall that was not a Star Wars show. It's an mm -hmm. Amazon show. Um, it's a uh, a a show called Shining Veil vale with um with Courtney Cox and Greg Kinnear. Nice. It's kind of like a haunting of Bly Manor kind of a show, but mm. um, it has like a dark comedic undertone. And um, and I play uh, uh, the villain in season two. Um, so, but anyway, nice. that's that's uh, what I was working on. Um, you know, I, I was watching the trailer of Mandalorian season three, and if you look close, I, I, I saw a character. I was like, oh, I got to make my own version of that. So if you go watch the trailer again you'll see a white protocol droid so in I was a like, bar with other droids right yes. no 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 he is in the streets welcoming mando mm -hmm. to what looks like navarro and i was just like oh that's cool a white protocol droid we haven't seen that since what empire strikes back like on is Hawk? carl weathers in his red robe uh, jacket yeah right, but right then yeah, there's a droid in that scene too right oh. um mm -hmm. i'm just saying when I saw the one in the trailer, I was like, oh my gosh, I got to make my own. Oh, so I got yeah. like a C-3PO and then painted him white. Oh, yeah. So to look like the one in the, yeah. in the trailer. Anyway, oh, I don't very cool. you know, who knows what that what that character is going to do. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. But I love I love the characters. Nice. And, yeah. and uh, so, yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned Carl. That it looked like there was a droid in that scene too, right? And he it looked yeah. like he was shiny. 
um, you know, who knows what, what that story is too. So, but I'm excited to see Carl in his, in his brand new, you know, upgrade, upgraded wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> Carl Weather, that was kind of a surprise in the beginning, but boy, did he do a great job. Wow, yes. He is just amazing, you know. He's, he's, he's really cool. I, li I like the, the character arc uh, of, of his going from, you know, sketchy uh, tr uh, betrayer to, you know, someone who looks like, you know, in the trailer, looks like him and Mando are friends again. So that's cool. I'd almost forgotten, you know, I was watching The Reckoning to watch you today. And I'm like, oh, yeah, he was bad for a while there. <laughs> oh, right. Man, it just happened. Yeah. Uh, so much has happened already. You guys are just doing I such know. a great job. So I hope, <laughs> uh, you know, once season three comes out and goes by and we get a glimpse at you and what you're doing, I hope you maybe come back and give us an update on what's going on, man. It's been a great time talking to you. It really has. Oh, it's great talking to you guys. Thank you so much yeah. for having me. All right. Well, All uh, right. we're going to we're gonna mention you on Instagram. Anything else you want to shout out? um pretty much that's where people post, are looking at you yeah that's where to go yeah. i'm, I'm yeah. posting I'll, i i post stuff on there about like um you know how to how to figure out your passion you know uh nice. in, um and and how to follow your passion in, in life um and then uh and then i also like to go out to conventions and meet you know with fans sure um in costume and and uh, just real quick um, because awesome. I'm such a costume guy, um, you know, a lot of times uh, people spend a lot, a long time um, on their costumes, weeks or months, you know, maybe years building their costumes and they finally finish it and they're probably exhausted sometimes. And then they go to conventions and they're, they're wearing their amazing looking costume. And I say, hey, let's get a picture. And they're just like, you know, like they're waiting for an Uber or something. And I'm like, hey, let's do that again. <laughs> But I want to shoot a video of you and and I give them just a little direction, like, you know, instead of just standing there, let's have you like, like turn around, you know, like this. And, uh, so, and, and uh, so you'll see a lot of that stuff. And then I posted on Instagram. And so you see a lot of reels and clips of people that I've filmed and, and given them, you know, just a little direction. What I love about that is you didn't make a costume, you made a character because you in the costume the costume is a costume without you in it but with you in it now it's a living character so that means do the voice walk like this character would walk talk to people like that character would talk to them and uh you know be menacing or annoying or creepy whatever um and that really makes it special for people so that's something i i love to do at conventions and i'll post up uh more of those. I've got lots of them on there, uh, but I'll be posting my dates here in this in the coming week of of the uh, the conventions I'll be doing this year. And nice. there's quite a few of them, so I'm really excited to see everybody in their costumes. Nice. That's so great. It, it, it's so important to you too how you get them to even kind of maybe come out of their shell a little bit. Yeah. And really have more of a good time that they even thought was possible. You know, people are just so kind of reluctant to take a chance. You know, and you I push know, them a little but, bit. But yeah. they done the majority of the work with building the costume and now all they have to do is just a little push it just a little bit and it goes sure. way just a little bit of effort of character goes way beyond uh what you think it is yeah. and so uh anyway i love i love doing that uh with with folks and with fans and uh, what's cool is it makes a magic moment for the person in the costume when they see the reaction of people to what they think uh you know this is could this be the real character is this a real character it feels real he sounds real he he looks really cool so uh yeah just it's it's a very special uh thing when someone can feel something from your performance or a thing that you made you know so uh like your like your podcast you, your, or your um your show you you know people come here they tune in they get to learn things that they didn't know before and they go away thinking you know feeling something that's really the point of a creative person is is see if you can get people to feel something you know with exactly. the thing that you make uh, uh an unforgettable moment or uh you know a cool nostalgic feeling or whatever any of those things that's if you can get someone to feel something that's 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 uh, it's very special nice. nailed it chris that's exactly yeah. what we're doing here wow 
Yeah, uh, good. Great. Well, I feel like we made a friend, Chris. Today. Yeah, it was, it was great oh, meeting you. This is great. And everybody, uh, everybody, check out the Mandalorian. Check out Boba Fett. Chris is all over the place. Places yeah. you probably don't even know. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. And uh, catch him on Instagram, everybody. He's yes. a hell of a nice guy, and oh, I had yeah. a great time talking to him tonight. So did Chris, I. Thank you for being here. All right. Uh -huh, thank you.